Hi there. In this lesson, we will try to look at a page the way a browser would see it, basically through the browser's eyes. So, for example, right now you can see two headings, headline 1 and headline 2. Then we've got several paragraphs with just text, text, text in it. And also, there is an unordered list on the page. However, the browser sees this page completely different from the way we see it. It's kind of as if it's using some kind of night vision device. Basically, it can see a lot more than what we see. So first, let's try to recreate the same page. We can see it right now on the screen, and then we'll try to look at the page the way the browser sees it. Alright, to do that, we're going to write an h1 tag with the heading headline 1. Then we will create a paragraph with the text, 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 and so on. After that, we will create heading h2 with the text headline 2. Then we are going to create another paragraph. And also we need to create an unordered list. At the end, we also create another little paragraph. So we basically just recreated the page. But also, let's make the second word in the first paragraph in bold. For that, we're going to use the strong tag. Also, let's italicize the second to last word in the second paragraph. For that, we will wrap it in an M tag. OK. So we created the page, and now it's time to look at the page through the browser's eyes. So the browser sees the body tag as this little box right here, like a rectangle. That means that the browser sees everything put into the body tag as a rectangle. So the h1 tag is also seen as a rectangle by the browser, but note that the browser sees it as a rectangle which takes up the entire width of the page. That's important to notice. And how does the browser see the H2 tag? Well again, for the browser it looks like a text in a rectangle, which takes up the entire width of the page. Alright, good. And how does the browser see the P tag? It also sees it as a text in a rectangle, which takes up the entire width of the page. Moreover, the same applies to the first, second, and third p tags. And what about the ul and li tags? Well, there are no exceptions here either. These tags are also seen by the browser as rectangles, which take up the entire width of the screen. Good, so how does the browser see the strong tag, for example? Well, in this case, for the browser this tag looks a bit different. It also sees it as a text wrapped in a rectangle, however, in this case the width of the rectangle is adjusted not to the size of the page, but to the size of the text, that is, the content inside. And how does the browser see the M tag? It's similar to the strong tag. That means that the browser wraps this tag into a rectangle, and again, the width of the rectangle is equal not to the width of the screen, but to the width of the word text, that is, the content inside. Alright, let's look at our page again. We can see that some tags, which are highlighted in blue, are seen by the browser as rectangles, which take up the entire width of the screen. These tags are called block elements, because they create an entire block. Some tags, which we highlighted in the orange color, are also seen by the browser as rectangles. But their width is equal to the width of the content inside of them. These elements are called inline elements. So please remember that all elements are divided into block elements and inline elements. Great. Now we know that for example the tags h1, h2, h3, and so on 
are block elements, and the tags P, U, L, L, I are also block elements. There are a lot of different block elements, and you're going to learn about them little by little. But what matters now is that you understand how the browser sees them, because it's going to be very important when we'll get to such an important topic as the block model in CSS. Okay, but there are also a lot of inline elements. And to understand which tag is an inline element and which is a block element, you simply need to look at the default value of the tag. If it takes up the entire width of the parent block, it's a block element. If it takes up the width of the content, then it's an inline element. Very simple. Alright, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video.